Stonewall 50 was a project that we did in honor of the 50th anniversary of the Stonewall Uprising. And we literally mapped queer historic sites in the Boston area. And the project was intended to get people to look around them to understand that queer history has always been part of Boston's history. We wanted to do it sort of a splashy thing and we also were very concerned with education, especially for young LGBTQ people. So it's interactive a little bit. And the posters would say, LGBTQ history was made in this building. On the poster would be a link. Go to that link and you can find out what the history was. If you only tell one part of the narrative, you're only hearing one perspective. And so we try our best to make sure that we're taking these stories from as many different angles as we can. Elites was the first and only black gay club in Boston. So I really feel like I have made an imprint here in the history of Boston. I lived in Grove Hall and I would go down to Dudley to Elites. The owner's name was Calvi, he was Cape Verdean, and he had a gay son named Paul. So I went down to the basement. It was just a bartender in me. I asked for a rum and coke. He ignored me. So then I asked again for a rum and coke. And he says, Mary, don't get your panties in a bunch. And I had just got back from Vietnam, and I'm like, you know, serving this country, and my name is not Mary. I just started flinging shot glasses at him, and he jumped on the bar, like, like John Wayne, and did a flying dive at me. So I went upstairs and I said, Paul, we can't go back to this club. This is ridiculous how they treat us. Why don't you talk to your father about turning this into a, a gay club? And that's how Elites was born. A place where you could be glamorous with no one calling you names. You felt elite at Elites. <laughs> the number one vote getter in our site was a surprise. It was the Boston Public Library main branch in Copley Square. The reason why they chose it is because there was a scandal in the men's room in the late 70s. The Boston police would put a decoy and if that young man was approached, the person would be arrested. It got so that some gay men were arrested walking around the library looking for a book. Every political activist group met here. We opened the doors here and said, this is your community center. There was a health club down the street called Back Bay Racket Club. They were harassing people that were obviously gay. We started out with the health club downstairs with a tiny little restaurant up here. Shut down Back Bay Racket Club. They went out of business like six months later. I call it the incubator for so much that has transpired in the gay community and in the nation. This is where people from GLAD would hang out over here and have cocktails when the marriage equality questions were being bandied about. This is where thoughts were launched. After COVID and being shut down for a hundred days, I had many people come up who were in tears and were really worried about whether or not this business had survived. It really said to me how important Club Cafe still is in the community. My hope with, with projects like these is that it will give others that sense of the legacy of the community. We've been here just as long as everyone else has been here in Boston, uh, and this is our city too. My generation, we went through the AIDS crisis, which is still going on, of course. People disappeared. They didn't get to live lives. I never realized that I think my passion for this work comes from they were here, they should be remembered. They made it better for all of us now. And even though they live short lives, I don't think they should be forgotten. 